आप सबका स्वागत है आज हम यहाँ एक ऐतिहासिक अवसर पर एकत्रित हुए हैं और वो अवसर है एक्सियॉन फोर मिशन का हिस्सा बनने वाले भारतीय अंतरिक्ष यात्रियों के साथ पहली मीडिया की बातचीत जो अंतरिक्ष अन्वेषण में हमारे देश के लिए एक गौरवपूर्ण मील का पत्थर है इस बारे में आपसे विस्तृत जानकारी साझा करने के लिए आज हमारे साथ मंच पर उपस्थित हैं माननीय विज्ञान और प्रौद्योगिकी पृथ्वी विज्ञान के केंद्रीय राज्य मंत्री स्वतंत्र प्रभाग प्रधानमंत्री कार्यालय अंतरिक्ष विभाग एवं परमाणु ऊर्जा विभाग में राज्य मंत्री डॉक्टर जितेंद्र सिंह जी सर आपका हार्दिक स्वागत है साथ ही हमारे साथ धन्यवाद इसके साथ ही हमारे साथ सचिव अंतरिक्ष विभाग और इसरो के अध्यक्ष डॉक्टर वी नारायण जी गगनयान मिशन के लिए नामित डेजिग्नेटेड अंतरिक्ष यात्री श्री प्रशांत बी नायर जी और ग्रुप कैप्टन शुभांशु शुक्ला दोनों लोग ग्रुप कैप्टन हैं उनका स्वागत है इस आज के प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस और ये परिचय का फ्लो इस प्रकार होगा सबसे पहले इसरो के अध्यक्ष एक संक्षिप्त प्रेजेंटेशन करेंगे और ही विल अपडेट ऑन इसरो एक्टिविटीज फिर गगनयान मिशन के लिए नामित अंतरिक्ष यात्री ग्रुप कैप्टन प्रशांत बी नायर और ग्रुप कैप्टन शुक्ला अपने विचार साझा करेंगे फिर तत्पश्चात माननीय मंत्री जी आप सबको संबोधित करेंगे तत्पश्चात आपके प्रश्नों के उत्तर लिए जाएंगे एक एक करके आप अपने प्रश्न पूछ सकते हैं और उनके सबके उत्तर देंगे तो सबसे पहले आई इनवाइट इसरो अध्यक्ष डॉक्टर वी नारायणन जी टू मेक अ प्रेजेंटेशन स्पीच मोस्ट रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर जितेंद्र सिंह जी मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट्स एंड माय डियर फ्रेंड्स from isro and press very good afternoon to all of you we will give the update on the progress of isro activities and as you are aware the isro space activities were started in the year 1962 can you go to the first slide the first launch was accomplished on 21st november 1963 can you saw the first line 1963 from that till now we have accomplished 133 satellite missions 102 launch vehicle missions five technology demonstration missions and 4002 sounding rockets including 240 total number of missions the important point is last 10 years if you see the progress is phenomenal exponential with respect to missions the number of missions targeted in 2015 to 2025 is almost double compared to 2005 to 2050 during the last 6 months if you see very 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 important three important missions are accomplished please move the slide four is operating and axiom 4 mission is a very prestigious mission we have successfully accomplished and the first indian is sent to safely to international space station and brought back safely you are having the gaganya 3 with us subhashan sukraji and gsly f16 rocket placing the most prestigious nasa isro synthetic aperture radar satellite on july 30th perfectly a satellite jointly realized by jpl nasa and isro yeah, the costliest satellite ever realized in the world is lifted off by indian launcher gslv and placed perfectly in the orbit and today the satellite health is totally perfect and we have uh, in fact uh, the unparalleled antenna is totally operational the first picture is coming and you are going to, we are going to share the picture maybe in couple of days another important thing in another 2 to 3 months we are going to have a 6500 kg communication satellite of usa going to be launched using our launch vehicle and till today 433 satellites of 34 countries are done from india after modi ji to core as the prime minister of this country the south asian satellite was conceived built launched and donated to the south asian countries and under his leadership we are also realizing the g20 satellite for the g20 countries and coming to the space sector reform which was announced in the year 2020 10 years back we had only one startup company in the space area in the country 
Now today under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of State, we are having 300 plus startup companies in the space area. That shows the significant growth of the startup system. And there are two suborbital missions done by private companies. And a week back on August 8, a 30 ton solid motor is successfully tested for a private company, Vikram 1 motor, and for jointly done by ISRO and the private sector. And 2025 is a very important year. Till now, we have done 196 accomplishments. That means every working day, more than one accomplishment is done. The 100th launch was successfully done from Sri Eri Kota, 100th launch by GSLU F-15, NASA ISRO synthetic upper radar, that satellite launch. And we have made a major breakthrough in a 200 ton LOFS kerosene engine. Jain, to all my countrymen, thank you for inviting us out here today. A few months from now, we're going to be having Diwali. And that's the time when Sri Ramji entered Ayodhya. Over here right now, to the Ram that is Shuks, if I can call myself Lakshman, it feels like there's Diwali here today when all our countrymen are here to receive us. But remember, even though I'm elder to Shuks, I would love to be Lakshman to this Ram any day. That's how professional he is. But remember, even Sri Ramji and Lakshman got a lot of help from the entire Warner Sena, that is our fantastic ISRO team. Thank you, Hanuman and team. And also from the Devtas, the entire gang out here. Otherwise, it, it would not have been possible. Also, the entire experience when we were there, I can just sum it up in Sat Chit Anandam. What is Sat? Satyam. Satyam Shivam Sundaram. Satyam, the truth, the time of Bharat has come. There is no doubt about it. Whether it's technical prowess, whether it's industry, whether it's a josh, our time has come. It's no small feat what the chairman has listed out till now. To know the implications, you must see the way when we were abroad with a lot of pride and with a little bit of envy from the others. You know, they say, how come you all have achieved so much? And though that too with a lot of humility. So that's the Satyam part of Sat. Chit, that is Shivam. Whenever Bharat does something, we make sure that everyone benefits. That's the consciousness we have because we believe one is everyone. It's not a zero-sum game. So similarly, from the experience point of view, when we were in the US, everyone had a lot of respect for all the things that we do. And they said that whatever you guys have been doing, you make sure that you share knowledge. And then, Anandam, Satchit Anandam, that is Satyam Shivam Sundaram. Everything is really beautiful. Like my colleague Shuk had said, my Ram, that when you see Bharat from top above, it's really beautiful. There's a reason why this ancient land has been providing guidance to the entire world since a long time. I invite Group Captain Subhanshu Shukla, astronaut of the Gaganyan mission, to share his experiences. Namaskar. It's good to see you all. Uh, you have only heard some questions but you are seeing your eyes. So it's good to see you all. Uh, it is difficult to follow Lakshman uh, in speech, you know, but I will try my best. Uh, I would like to start by thanking the uh, people who have made this mission possible. And there are multiple layers to this, not just one person. I will start by thanking the government of India for conceiving about this mission and finally making it happen. I would like to thank ISRO for enabling this entire mission, the people, my colleagues at ISRO who have uh, worked so hard for successfully executing this mission. I would also like, I, I see some faces here, the PIs, the researchers who have enabled the experiments for the Axiom 4 mission. And I would like to thank them for their contribution and their work uh, for this mission. I would like to thank you guys uh, for bringing this mission to the uh, population of this country, to the common man and making it uh, accessible by everyone to view. And in the end, I would like to thank each and every citizen of this country who who behaved in a way that they actually owned this mission. I really felt that this was a mission for this entire nation. So with this, 
I have limited time to share my experience of this past one year. I will try my best to cover the salient aspects, yeah. and thereafter we can follow up in the question and answers. This mission, Axiompo mission, was a, a mission to the International Space Station. Uh, so we were flying on top of the Falcon 9 vehicle in the Crew Dragon, uh, and to the International Space Station for a period of two weeks, and thereafter coming back. The launch was from Cape Canaveral, uh, Florida, and recovery was off the coast of San Diego in the Pacific Ocean. Crew Dragon is one of the three vehicles which can take humans to space as of now, and uh, we were fortunate to have the training on the other one, uh, the Soyuz, which goes from Russia, as well as Crew Dragon now. International Space Station, as you know, is, is an orbiting laboratory which has been there since 2000 and has been conducting cutting-edge science and is actually a perfect example of a uh, uh, marvel of human engineering and human collaboration. My profile in this mission was as a mission pilot. So, Crew Dragon, there, there are four seats and I was the mission pilot. I had to work with the commander and interact with the systems of the Crew Dragon. Basically, anything that has to be done with the Crew Dragon was uh, our responsibility. Now, with this mission profile, uh, oh, uh, for the two weeks on the ISS, the work that we had, the job that we had was we had to perform the experiments that were conceived, developed, and realized by the Indian researchers, and also to perform STEM demonstrations and uh, you know just capture photograph, photographs and videography uh, to bring it back to you. So that was the primary job while we were up on their station. To execute this mission profile, we were training at various places and uh, it was distributed. So we were at NASA, uh, European Space Agency, and also we traveled to Japan for executing uh, the training for the International Space Station. Uh, at the same time, we also went to SpaceX for training on the Crew Dragon vehicle, which was the vehicle on which we were going to travel to space. For tra training on the experiments uh, that were prepared by researchers, we traveled to various NASA centers. The benefit of executing a human spaceflight mission end to end is more than the training, actually. The supplementary knowledge that you get just by being there, the experience of it, the conversations that you have, the interaction that you have with people who have had a history of uh, human spaceflight, it is invaluable. And I think all of this information uh, that I've been able to collect in the past one year is, is going to be extremely useful for us for our own mission, the Gaganyaan and the Bharti Antrik Station. And very soon we shall see somebody traveling up in our capsule from our rocket, from our soil. In spite of all this training, you have done so much training, but after that, when you sit in the rocket and when the engine is ignited, when they catch fire, I think it is a very different feeling. I had not imagined of how it would feel like. And I was actually you know, running behind the rocket for the first few seconds. I took time to catch up to it. From that point of time till the time we splashed down, the experience has been unbelievable. It has been so exciting and so amazing that I really have been struggling to find words of how do I convey to you so that you live that through my words. Probably I'll take some more time. But uh, the training prepares you very well for the mission, but the experience is very different from what you learn on ground. On orbit, when we reached and you would have seen that the body undergoes a lot of changes. There are different things that happen to you. When Pradhan Mantri Ji had my interaction with the Pradhan Mantri Ji, you would have seen that my sir was this size. It was double this size. And so, there are many changes in the body. You don't feel good for the first three to four days, but you still are working and you are interacting with the system and doing a lot of work. But after that, in three or four days, your body is used to it. It feels good. And you, you start performing well and you start uh, feeling okay and everything becomes all right. And then when you have spent 20 days, when you come back, then again the body forgets of how it is to live in gravity. And so it again has to readjust and rewire to understand of what it takes to just walk or just hold things or just do things. I, I, I narrated this incident in one of the interviews, I think before that uh, I was sitting on my bed and I was holding my laptop and the habit was so ingrained in me that I held my laptop and I left it, uh, hoping that it will float. But unfortunately, we have gravity here. So it just fell down and thankfully nothing happened because of the carpet. But uh, that is the kind of rewiring your brain has to undergo. Uh, you know, when you come back, when you either when you go up or when you come back. 
I I feel that this mission has been extremely successful in terms of a lot of things. We have been able to achieve all our technical objectives. The uh, aim, the objective that we had laid down because of the effort of a lot of people. Uh, but there are a few takeaways from this mission that I would like to uh, just talk about before I close out. And those takeaways are witnessing and execution of a human spaceflight mission like this gives you a lot of knowledge, a lot of information. And these are intangibles. You cannot measure them. You cannot just put everything on paper and uh, write it down. The experience uh, goes much beyond and much deeper than what you are uh, you know, documenting or putting in books. So I think that is going to be very valuable for us, for our journey of human spaceflight mission that we are starting. I also realize the power of the scientific temper. The excitement that I saw in kids, the excitement that I saw in people that was there. I had three interactions uh, from orbit with the kids. One was the live event and then there were two ham radio interactions. And in each one of these interactions, there was at least one kid who asked, how do I become an astronaut? And I think that was the biggest win for me from this mission that kids here are already thinking that they want to become an astronaut. And the good thing is that we are ready, ISRO is ready, India is ready with the rockets, with the launchers, that we have the capability now that we can make this dream a reality very soon. So 